In usual COPD, it's known that these episodes are associated with inflammation. And of course, in alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, inflammation in the lung is thought to be much more severe because of the deficiency itself. So the exacerbations that these people experience, they're not more frequent, but they are certainly associated with more inflammation. And they're also associated with a longer duration of action. And the patients themselves become just as unwell uh, as they would have with usual COPD. Once patients are uh, capable to uh, self-administer this drug, um, they improve uh, their quality of life and they have a, a better control of their disease. I self-infuse, I travel and I live the life I want to live due to self-administration of my plasma therapy. We found that all of the patients currently self-infusing um, have been very satisfied or satisfied with their augmentation therapy infusions being self-administered. We found very few problems with patients who are self-infusing and they've identified that the freedom it gives them provides uh, a, a level of flexibility for patients who would otherwise be shackled to an IV uh, in an infusion center or by a nurse uh, uh, for uh, the entirety of their treatment for alpha-1. We know that alpha-1 patients benefit from pulmonary rehab. That means an increase in capacity. The biggest problem is just to get that increase in capacity and ability to do something um, into daily activity because we know that activity um, is correlated with mortality. The more the people do, the more active the people are, um, the less is in the portion of mortality. My message for all of you is to help us diagnose the alpha-1 individuals. We all know this is a rare disease, but it comes from our populations with COPD and makes up 1% of all those individuals. The, uh, the new therapies in the pipeline can't be given to your patients if you don't know that they have alpha-1. It's up to all of us to test all of our patients with COPD once in a lifetime.